can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you so, so much for coming on. Um, I so appreciate you come on, taking some time out of your day for my podcast. I truly appreciate you taking time to come on. I'm such a massive fan of yours. I love your work. So this means so much to have you on. You're so sweet, Kylie. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Oh, of course, of course. So, well, I'll be doing like a little intro and then I'll ask you a couple of questions. It'll take about a half hour at least, depending on the interview. And sure. so like, uh, I, I don't know, I can't, I don't know how much questions I have. It's probably kind of to keep track of the questions. So I'll be doing a little kind of small intro and then I'll have you introduce yourself. Then we can just go down from there. Perfect. All right, you ready to get started? Yes. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode 14 of Talk of Fame podcast. I'm Kylie. If you haven't noticed, we have the wonderful actress, Aria Servantis, with us today. Instead of introducing you, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us more about what you do? Yes. So I'm a model and actress, and I recently started uh, writing and producing as well. Um, I've been working in the film industry for about eight or nine years. Um, I've traveled all around the world. Um, I'm originally from Europe, and uh, but I grew up in Cleveland, um, moved to LA a while ago, and just been pursuing my dream. I love that. Like since like, you said you were doing acting, acting, producing, modeling, what is like your favorite thing to do? Like what is your favorite like kind of job you do while doing acting and modeling and all of that? Um, so acting is definitely my biggest passion. That's kind of why I, what attracted me in the industry in the first place. Um, I just love telling stories, honestly. Um, I'm very passionate about um, just making people laugh, making people cry, um, inspiring others and communicating things to people changing their perspectives in in ways that they didn't even realize they they could have like cinema is so powerful and I'm kind of every year I'm in this industry I'm like learning to harness it more and it's just so cool like how powerful it really can be so my favorite part of my job is just telling stories and moving the audience truly yeah, I love that. Like, that's really the reason I, like, kind of started this whole podcast thing is because I wanted to inspire people and that they can do anything. Like, because I always kind of want to be part of the industry, but I didn't know, like, what part I wanted to be in. Mm-hmm. But, like, I tried, like, many things like acting and so many other things, and I was like, I don't think this is my thing. I don't know if I'm oh. doing my thing. But, like, I just knew, like, I wanted to be somewhere in the industry. I don't know if I want to be front of camera, behind camera, or what I want to do. So I started, uh, like, oh, maybe I should do a podcast. He's like, I have two people on my dad's side that do journalists. Like, they do journalism for my uh, news station local. So I was like, oh, maybe i try it. Like, uh, uh, every time I see my family, they always say, like, oh, you'll be so good at that. You'll be so good. And I was like, uh maybe I didn't I was like all right because I didn't kind of take it serious at first I was like all right maybe I don't know and then like once COVID hit once we're stuck in quarantine I was like oh maybe I should try it that's kind of when I got I kind of like when it came to my mind so I was like oh maybe I should try if I don't like I don't like it so like once I tried it like I started early April of this year and I was like after the first episode, I really liked it. Then after kind of, I didn't know if it was this kind of specific that episode. That's so why I was like, oh, I'll do a couple more of the episodes. And I was like, oh, this is kind of my thing now, I guess. So I like, kept going and like the support I've been getting, I, I like kind of no words to describe like what I got, like support and people I get to meet like you and so many other people and be able to talk with you guys and be able be friends for a long time which kind of uh, that's really the most important thing for me to be able to talk to you guys and be able to bond you guys and kind of learn about like what you guys do and kind of bond over what what you guys do and see oh. what other people's success in their lives you're doing such a great job i'm so proud of you kylie you're wonderful oh thank you you are too thank you so much thank you so much so over the last year in the U.S., we've been stuck at home due to COVID-19. What is one thing they did that you would have time to do before COVID hit? I'd say definitely starting my script. Um, I'm writing a feature film currently, and um, during COVID, I had a lot of time to do that. Um, also, I kind of um, 
I mean, this isn't very productive, but I started playing more video games too. <laughs> oh, me too. Me yeah. too. Me too. Did you do the yeah. Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch? Yeah. 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 I used to be obsessed with that game a couple of years ago. I used to be obsessed playing Animal Crossing. Oh, did you have all the other versions like Nintendo 3DS and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you play any other games besides Animal Crossing that, or is this just Animal Crossing? I got really good at Mortal Kombat too, so oh, really? if anyone wants to challenge me, I don't know. I'm kind of unbeatable at this point, but yeah. yeah me too, me too. Yeah. Oh, you too? All right, I'll have to fight you sometime. <laughs> yeah, 100%, just text me like whenever you're free and I'll play it. Like, you can do oh. something. So <laughs> over like the last year, we had like a lot of free time since we've been at home so much. Is there any shows or movies that you binge watch over quarantine? Oh, yes. Okay, so I binge watched Lucifer. Um, on Netflix. Also, I watched um, a show called Dead to Me and oh. The Witcher. Oh, I love The Witcher. That was such a oh, good show. Love nice. it. Like, I, I want to. I want to. That's on my list. Have you watched um, Grey's Anatomy? I want to ask anyone, like anyone, I'm guess that they watch like, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. So, you know, for, I know so much about the show. I just never really had the I never like got into it. I haven't watched it actually. Did, should I? Should I watch it? I, I probably should. <laughs> In my opinion, I definitely would recommend watching it. But okay. like, I started doing watching over the quarantine. He's like over the last month. I, I my whole family got COVID, so I had it was oh, home God. for almost a month and oh. stuff. And like, I only watched season eleven over the last year because of, I'm a huge Gina Davis fan. Like, she's the reason mm -hmm. I do this because of her and. She, like, it's my dream, dream to have her on. And, like, that only, she's on season 11, Grey's Anatomy. So I was like, oh, I'll just watch this. But then, like, once I got stuck at home, the like, quarantine, my whole family getting it, including me. So I was like, oh, why not just start from the beginning and try to watch it? Because my friend kind of got me into it when we watched this. I was like, oh, why not watch it? Then I immediately came obsessed. Like, I was like, oh. I literally watched like three seasons while I was in like quarantine. Like, I just watched three seasons. Like, I just couldn't get my eyes off this. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> like, that's really the only thing that kind of got me through quarantine. Basically. Oh, see, that's what the power of cinema and the power of shows like. It's so good. It gets people through like a world crisis. Like, that's what made us stay sane, kind of in a way, you know? We got some yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The secret of movies and shows, you're an actress yourself. So before we dive into your career, I want to ask, what made you want to begin acting? Oh, that's a good question. So, you know, I, I've wondered this for a while, like a lot of people have asked me, but I can't remember an exact moment of when I'm like, this is it. I kind of knew from when I was like a kid. I mean, I've always been inspired by seeing, you know, those people playing around in those little boxes that you call TVs. And I just was like inspired I don't know like I, I all my life I've just knew I just knew I love that like I always kind of bit like love tv I always love like I always sat in front of tv I was like I love this so I a couple of years ago like I actually wanted to be an actor like I was like maybe this is my thing like oh like, I asked my parents I was like oh maybe this is my thing they're like Kylie do you know that this is a hard business to get into I'm like because it's like all of like people treating kind of female and everything about in the industry and it's hard to like be in the industry so I was like yeah but if I don't like it I don't like it I tried and after like I do cyber school so like they have like a bunch of kind of classes for like theater and acting and all of that so, like I tried it last year and I was like oh maybe it's not my thing like I didn't know if it's just like cyber from doing it online or like it was like in or I should do it in person and actually learn about it. I was like, oh, I don't know about this anymore. <laughs> and that's okay. And that's why you try. You know you want to be in the industry in some way, but you don't necessarily have to be in front of the camera. And sometimes, you know, it, it's all a team effort. There's no way somebody could be in front of the camera if there wasn't all this work done behind the scenes. I mean, there's so much going on and it's, there's no way one person can do everything. So, I mean, writers, producers, directors, journalists, um, people like you like you're so talented I can tell and I think you know you should be involved in some way if you're passionate about the industry it, it itself you know and maybe eventually you like acting and then you could try it out you know whatever you want 
the world yeah journal. yeah like percent yeah like you said like a bunch of journalists like always like interview like kind of people behind the scenes when they're like maybe like like before when they're filming on the set like that's kind of what I kind of wanted to do because I can actually kind of meet people that like kind of like your experience or I can like interview people in sports or something they always I come from kind of like a sports family so I was like oh maybe I'll do that like I know I kind of want to be part of like like everything basically to try to do something and I'm, my family like Kylie you would be perfect at that I'm like maybe uh, you have to you're natural it's so easy to talk to you you're you're great Kylie seriously you are oh, thank you you're great thank you so much it means so much so you played with like so many actors and actresses in your career what 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 actor or actress did you have like the most fun like working with Ooh, so I would say there's this wonderful actress named Liz Fenning. Um, she's done a lot of uh, movies. Um, I just did a Lifetime movie with her, and she played my mother. And I've, Kylie, when I say that she's, like, one of the best actresses I've ever worked with, like, I mean it. She's just so phenomenal. Um, you know, when you're acting and you're doing a scene, it's so important to be present and just to be locked in. And with her, I was just so emotionally there it was so easy to portray these emotional scenes between mother and daughter um so I just had such a blast working with her on that lifetime movie yeah I love that like what was like your favorite kind of experience like working with her I would say I mean I love I love a good drama and when there were some emotional scenes where um you know my character she kind of breaks down or she's she's almost like she fights with her mom she breaks down she needs her mother for support um I'd say that it was just definitely just doing those specific kind of scenes with her like that was really emotionally powerful oh I love that and you'll, you'll see I, I can't reveal too much but you'll you'll see you yeah want. yeah let me like is it an episode that come air yet or it hasn't aired yet um, so it's a TV movie on Lifetime, and it'll air probably sometime this fall. They're in post-production right now, and they don't have, like, an exact date, but um, I'll post about it whenever we find out, and it's probably just going to be at the end of this year. All right, yeah, I'll I'd, I'd make sure to, to check it out. <laughs> I'm for that. So, like, you've been, like, in the industry for a while. What is your favorite thing about being in the industry? Because sometimes it can be a hard place to be in. Oh, Kylie, you're absolutely right when you say it could be hard. Um, it, I mean, this industry is full of opportunities. Um, I believe if there's a will, there's a way. Sometimes, though, this industry really tests your patience, and you just want to be like, I have done so much. I want to be here. I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, why didn't I get this project? Why didn't I book this audition? And so many times I had to, like, fight with myself, and I realized, honestly, like, um, I was kind of stopping my own success by like overthinking. And I realized like this industry, um, just relax, do your best, don't overthink. Um, and my favorite part of it is that you are able to do whatever you want. Just don't get in your own way type of thing. Um, yeah, like it's, it's really, there's just an endless amount of opportunity. You can write your own projects. You can, you can act, you can do all these things. You, you can, do this on that project, but you could do something else on a different project. I mean, and there you make friends, you make all sorts of people from our, all sorts of walks of life, and you get to travel, you get to um, experience different cultures when you're on a set that's, for example, in Prague, a set that's in Australia or Costa Rica. Like, when can you truly immerse yourself in a different culture other than on a film set, pretending that, it, like, this is your life, this is where you're supposed to be? It's, it's just kind of like, um, I'm babbling a little bit, but I'm just so like, I love it. I love the movie experience that like, if for example, like if you're, um, I mean, if you're filming somewhere in Australia and you're, you know, you're a journalist, you get to be a journalist, like truly for those couple months. And then afterwards you do a different project and you're completely someone else. You're like a murderer or whatever. You get to live in the shoes of a murderer in England. It, it's just like, you get to live your dream. You get to live your imagination. It's just, it's like a dream in real life type of thing. Yeah, I love that. Like that's like one well, I really want like the best things about our things that like, you can travel, the things you kind of wanted to go to. Like you can do like want to see some places, like I say England, you can also act with people that you enjoyed or just kind of learn about while you act. Oh, exactly. 
and like like you said overthinking like I'm like also like I'm very like overthinker if people may or may not know about I'm very bad overthinker and like I very overthink like over this process with the podcast like I, I always think about like how am I going to get a lot of views on this post? Like, why am I not getting a lot of views? Like, I want to say I worked hard on this episode. This work episode meant a lot, like, to me and stuff. And, like, I don't get a lot of views. So I'm like, is, is there something wrong with me? Like, I see myself, is there oh, something wrong with me? No, and see, I learned that, Kylie, throughout my years. I was the same exact way. And I learned that, it perf- and it's not a bad trait. It's a, it's a, it's, it, it roots from perfectionism. And, there's nothing wrong with perfectionism, but it, it harms you when you do overthink and it causes anxiety. So I learned that when I do the work, I prepare as much as I can. And then inevitably you can't really always control like what's about to happen or what's going to happen. All you can do is your best in that moment. Um, and then that way you live with no regrets. But I notice myself when I'm out of my head and I'm kind of like, okay, I did the work and then I just get to play, just have fun and kind of approach things with a playful attitude like that um usually brings out my best self because it kind of like unlocks my soul and then like I kind of just like I'm more free and I'm not in my own chains because you end up chaining yourself when you do overthink type of thing but it's it's hard it's actually an addiction I learned it's an addiction to overthink years ago and it's like been trying to break that yeah yeah, 100 percent Yeah, like the best thing, like like if you like think like, oh, people don't see like a lot of this movie that I'm in. Like it only cares about like, your happiness, really. It doesn't matter if you did good in this movie or just good it's supposed to, you're supposed to get like a lot of views, but then get as big as it's supposed to. Like that's kind of like what's the point of like kind of like being an actor, or being a journalist or a singer, is that like you just want to have fun. Like you dream of being this uh, awesome singer, you just trying to start out and like you just need it kind of takes time that's kind of what people say to me it does take time it doesn't matter if you're perfect it doesn't matter if you look different it doesn't matter if your personality is different it doesn't matter if you're trying people are trying to be like you like like I always get that like people always say like oh be this way or be that way be look like this person I'm like think of myself like you can be anything you want like that's like that's like a lot of people in the industry get is that you have to look a specific way. And like you have to be look like this, you have to be this person that you're not really am. And like I've been getting like a hate, a lot of hate saying like, oh, you're mean, you're trouble, you all this stuff. Oh, I'm, don't like, listen to those people. I'm thinking myself, like, you don't even Why? know me. Like, do you know who if you really knew me, who I am, then you like, yeah. wouldn't say any of those things. Like, I don't want to make up a lie saying, like, oh, you're trouble. I'm thinking to myself, like, if you knew me, if I knew you, I wouldn't do such a thing at all. <laughs> I'll just keep it to myself. Like, bro, like, what did I do to you? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, people who judge or people who say things like that, it's their problem, not yours because if you're in a happy state of mind you're not going to go and judge someone or critique them usually when people say something bad about someone else it actually is a reflection of their own insecurities so it's really a them issue so just you know eyes on the prize keep moving forward and honestly when you do something you're happy and passionate about success follows and if you don't worry about the results and focus on the journey and kind of just enjoy the process and find happiness and and everything you do it doesn't matter the views doesn't matter what it will follow it, that's the irony of it it's kind of like when you're looking for love you're not going to find it but when when you're just like I'm not looking for anything it just like there you go soulmate type of thing yeah 100 percent. yeah I totally agree with that like there's yeah. like a bunch of like actors actors out there in the industry what do you look up to do, like, do you look up to anyone in your career that's like still here or not here I do oh okay so I, I really, I recently, I know this is bad on my part. I should have seen this movie a lot earlier, but I recently saw The Godfather um, and uh, Brando. He's just, he is phenomenal. I can't believe I did not see that movie before. He's, I know he's no longer with us, but he's, his acting is just like, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal how he transforms into that character. He was only 47 when he played Don Vito. It, it's just, I, wow. Um, another, oh, you know who I really like? Gerard Butler. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Um, 
uh, Phantom of the Opera, P.S. I Love You, those movies, when he acts in those, I don't know if you've seen those. Ha- have you seen those two? Yeah, uh, I see, I've seen uh, Phantom of the Opera. Oh, I mean, although he's technically not a professionally trained opera singer, just the amount of passion that he exerts in his uh, songs is just like, it's so moving. It's almost like, to me, I almost prefer it more than the uh, theatrical release because it's it just, you can, you can like see it in his eyes and it's just so, it's, he's phenomenal. It's like so like phenomenal. moving to you. It's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> and of course, I totally of, agree. yes. And I, and I love a lot of, um uh you know, female uh, celebrities as well. Jennifer Lawrence, I think she's, oh my gosh. Something about her, when I watch her act, I just get phased. I'm just like, this. she is so, so good. She's yeah, just, same I would you. die to work alongside you too. Yeah, I would I would die to work alongside her. Yeah, me too. I would love to meet Jennifer Lawrence. Like, there are so many people that I look up to in my career, like with journalism, like Patrick Dempsey, Hugh oh. Gilman, Gina yeah. Davis, Luke Evans. Like, there's so many people those are my main people that I look up to I adore all of them I love them more than more than I can explain they're all the reason I do what I do they kind of inspired me to keep going because last year has been really rough for me I I dealt with anxiety my whole life and I just recently got a diagnosed with anxiety disorder in March of this year I had meds for it and stuff and it was very hard like I didn't want to do anything I was always kind of depressed like I was kind of going through depression and mm-hmm. anxiety disorder but I didn't like I didn't like kind of want to admit I was depressed because like I didn't want to make people like kind of worried about me that's kind of like the last thing I wanted to do like to make people worried because like I didn't I always kind of ever since I was little I kind of hated being kind of like center of attention and I just never liked that so I was like, oh, I keep myself, if, if, if I'm ready to open up to people about it, I will open up. And so, like, I felt this kind of was the right time to open up to my family and tell them, like, what I had been through. So it's like, it was, it was really rough being mostly in this quarantine that you had to stay home and stay, home, like, being stuck at home, not really doing anything. Yeah. And I was like, it was rough. Like, I was like, I was kind of like, after a while, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I just... I can't deal with this and like I felt no one was like kind of there for me no one had like like picked me up whenever I needed to pick me up like there's some days I had good days some I had bad but like some like over like while I'm over the last year like there is like I had received phone calls from family saying that like, there's that like they kind of gave me like they didn't know that I've been kind of going through this so like, they kind of like I didn't say it unless I kind of wanted to let them know. And, you know, like, over the last year, even in quarantine, too, like, when I was stuck in quarantine with COVID, my family called me, check up on me. Like, it's just, like, those little things that kind of, like, make me happy. Like, when my co- Robert called me, and, and if, Robert, you're seeing this, I love you so much, and you're the best. You helped me save me through some of my tough, like, this quarantine. And he called me, like, I called him, and he called me. And now he, and he was like, Kylie, like, you look good. Like, you look well. Like, you, like, look better than, like, some people will while having COVID. Like, you'll get through this, like, I promise. This says some, like, encouraging words to me that I never kind of thought I would hear. Because I was like, I hate being quarantined. Like, I just want to leave this house. Like, I hate it. Like, I was kind of never used to being home, stuck at home. Because, like, I'm usually, like, kind of, like, going outside going for walks I can still go outside but like I, I usually go on walks with my friends go do stuff go outside play with my see family and friends but then my I got quarantined I couldn't do that I couldn't see anyone so I was like in being stuck in one room and I was like I hate this like I never felt this way before I was bored on my mind but when my cousin Robert told me all those cringing words to me I was like I'm gonna get through this like I'm got like that's like the like when my talk talking my family and stuff calling me out. Like, this is like the courage me I needed. Like since like, after that, I was like, I get through this. Like I got this. Like he really and, and and Robert, if you're watching this, I love you so much. I see you soon. Oh, Kylie, that's such a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing. Oh, wow. Of course. 
you're so amazing. And I'm so happy that you have amazing people in your life. You know, you're so blessed and you're so loved. And I can see why people love you because you're such a wonderful human being. I, I really feel that from you. Although we're not in the same room, I, I feel that. So I, I oh my gosh, I, God bless your heart. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You're the sweetest person ever. Thank you so much. You have the most beautiful heart. I love you so much already. Love, much love. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> Speaking of acting, did you like learn anything about yourself while you're in the field with auditioning and being in front of the camera and also like you said producing and stuff like modeling and stuff? Oh, that is such a good question. You know, throughout this process of auditioning, getting rejected, booking something once in a while, I really learned to not focus on the result. It, this is kind of like what we talked about earlier with focusing on the process and finding happiness and rejoicing in the moment versus like, I will be happy once I book this and I will be happy once I win this award or this or that, or this gets a certain amount of recognition. I, I honestly learned, and it did take me many years, but I learned, okay, enough is enough. I am not going to put my life and my happiness in someone else's hands, like a casting director or someone else. And no offense to them, they're great at their jobs, but it's just like, as an actor, you kind of have to be okay with not booking something, be okay with rejection. You're humbled constantly. And I started um, just smelling the roses, just kind of observing my surroundings, kind of just like, wow, this is, you know, a really pretty color. Like, wow, this water tastes so good. I'm just like, wow, life is good. Like, I'm alive. I'm, I feel great. Like, look, I have hands. Like, I, life is amazing. And I started kind of just um, uh, being more present. That's what it is, being more present. And yeah, I love that. Like, I like everything that you take, like, because, like, a lot of people don't have kind of, like, the same opportunities as, like, everyone does. And, like, that's, like, a good thing. Like, it's always, like, you take in the presence of, like, what you're trying to do and, like, meeting new people and trying to try to take a semi because you don't know if this role or something that you make that might change your life forever and might get, get recognition. So I, like, I absolutely love that. Yeah, it's so important. And a lot of people, you know, they're stuck in the past, they're stuck in the present, or not the present, past and future, but um, they're not living in the moment. And you know what's crazy? I almost feel like I can say I was living my life in autopilot, kind of just like letting the world happen around me, doing my own thing, but I wasn't like really understanding my surroundings or kind of just, I didn't, I wasn't awake. And then yeah. I kind of, recently after being humbled in a few occasions like I just I'm like I need to be happy I I can't and then I started kind of waking up and now I just kind of feel more I guess how they say woke I, I don't know <laughs> so yeah fun. me too, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, do you have any secrets on how you get into a character while feeling a specific role oh that's a good question really good questions I love these um okay so I don't know if it's a secret, but a lot of times when I, um, you know, prepare for a role, of course, I read the script, um, I kind of, uh, like, try to find out reasons why a character does what she does. Why um, does she dress a certain way? Why does she say this line? Why? What is her relationship to this person? And why is she saying what she says? It's usually just finding out reasons and kind of finding out a backstory. And a lot of times, I almost give my own character a little secret just to like spice it up, just kind of like, you know, add a little spice to my, to my performance. Yeah, add a little spice. Uh, yeah, a little, 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 you know, kind of um, just something that the audience maybe, you know, won't know or they won't find out, but my character knows and it kind of like adds some flavor, flavor to it. But, um, and also before I uh, perform, I do um, try to get myself into a mindset of just like a, a really clear and present state of mind. And I, learn a lot of things from my Shaolin um, class because I've been, I've been taking uh, Shaolin and practicing this uh, thing called Qigong um, and it's kind of like a yoga mixed with Tai Chi um, and I just do a lot of breathing exercises um, and that kind of really helps me calm down and get in a really clear state of mind and kind of just like relax and just start playing. Yeah, same here like when I'm like over like sometimes I feel overwhelmed while trying to 
prepare yourself to be like asking and like that's how like when I'm like stressed about doing an interview or trying to like stress about too much going on I'll be like the people will ask me like Kylie breathe breathe like okay okay." (laughs) like sometimes I just forget to breathe like sometimes I just forget oh it's in my mind you can calm down relax and just you'll be okay you'll be fine like Gina Rodriguez says in Jane the Virgin in honey, exhale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love that. You played some amazing roles throughout your career. What role has meant the most to you? And you know, it truly has um, been the one that I just did in my lifetime movie. It's I just really like that um, role I had. Um, my character basically she. Um, uh, she goes to really preppy high school. Um, she's from a poor family, but she's able to go because her mother is a teacher there. Um, and she wins a scholarship, a, a very good scholarship, like 200K. Um, and she, there's a lot of jealousy surrounding that. Um, but she's overall just a, a good girl. She's a good student. She's a good person, you know, good friend, good daughter. Um, and throughout the movie, she kind of gets like harassed. Um, all these things start happening to her and it kind of drives her crazy crazy and she just she starts fighting with her mother and you don't really know who's doing all this like who is causing her all this disarray and it's kind of like um I really liked um kind of showcasing that sometimes like you know in real life um we have a uh, confusion going on around us and we don't know why things are happening or why things happen to people when they just try to do good um yeah. so I feel like my character I just really like expressing that through her um, through Sophie and yeah th- that was just one of my favorite roles that I did recently I love that is that the new movie that's coming out like the new like yeah. that's oh, the one I'm so excited yeah like out. once you told me I was like I'm so excited yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> to see this like what is like the audition process like for you when you're like auditioning for like a movie or show so um a couple years ago before COVID um we just used to go to um the studios or some casting offices it was usually like uh you get your set of sides um you have maybe a day sometimes it's the day of very rare mostly for tv shows but um you get a set of sides um they tell you a breakdown about your character um you memorize and then you just go to the audition at your given time slot you do it and then you leave um i used to i used to be really busy i used to have like uh three auditions a day, call back this, that. It used to be crazy, but now everything's kind of changed. You do self tapes. So you don't really go anymore um, into the audition. Very rarely. I don't, I don't think anyone's doing that right now. Maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't gone physically in as of the last year, maybe just for one or two projects um, because of COVID. Um, so we all do self tapes at home. And it's kind of cool because by doing self tapes at home, you uh, have more takes, like you you send in what you want them to see instead of like um, going in there, maybe stumbling on a word. And then it's just like, oops, like that's it. Yeah. Like can't really, oops. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, like, is there like any like audition that you like you didn't get like the like movie or like TV show was like a big hit in the box office? Oh yeah, I mean, I came this close to so many roles. Um, well, there was this role um, for Twenty Four Legacy. Um, I kind of forget the character's name, but it was a recurring role. Um, I I had like like three callbacks. I was super close. It was just between me, maybe one or two other people. That one I, I did not get. Um, there was an audition that I did for. Uh, oh, have you seen the show? Um, um, the one with uh, Katriana Belf on Stars. It's uh not the Highlander do, do you know what I'm talking about uh, oh Outland, Outlander. So. Yeah, Outlander. Yeah. it's such a good show yeah to be their daughter I got pretty close to that one um and then I mean I I mean I auditioned for X-Men before I've, I've, I've auditioned for a lot of leading roles that I really would have wanted but you know God the universe said that it's not my time and there's something else out there for me and you know that's how it is yeah, oh 100%. Like, did you say, like, you, like, auditioned for X-Men? Oh, yeah, that was, um, that was years ago for the Apocalypse movie. Yeah, wow. but Turner, uh, got the role, um, and she's a wonderful actress, and she did a great job. 
great job i love it because i actually love like all the x-men movies because like he i'm a huge if you know me like my whole family knows i'm obsessed with hugh jackman i'm in love with hugh jackman oh, fantastic yeah, i love i yeah. love it as well I, first You're like it's a dream, dream. Like, to have him on the podcast with Gina, like, Gina Davis, like, those are my two, like, those, like, I try to, like, I want, like, what's it, like, I, mem- like, I want them on so badly, like, my, I remember, I, like, I actually asked my mom a couple of weeks ago, I was like, hey, miss, she works for Comcast, so I was like, hey, mom, can you maybe help me get Gina and Hugh on, like, is there any way you could, is there maybe a way, like, for, like, your, like, your work? They can help me kind of get them on. You're like, she's like, Kylie, you're like, that's kind of not the side I work on. You have to go to like a different side. I forget what side like you have to kind of work on, but she doesn't work on a side. I'm like, mom, can you like help reach out? To me? You're like, pull some string, mom. Come on, use your magic. <laughs> yeah, you, I was like, mom, can you use your magic? I, this is the one opportunity I want, and I was hoping you can pull some strings. I can't do everything by myself. I can't do everything by myself by getting them on. So I was like, mom. Help me, please. Like, can you please help me? I need help. I'll spread the word. I'll spread the word. I'll let people know, you know? So yeah, if, if anyone that's watching this right now, if you're in the industry or anyone, if you know Gina or Hugh, Gina Davis and Hugh Jackson, reach out to them. Like, reach out to <laughs> have them on this. If you get, the, if you if they say yes or anything, reach out to me, all right? Reach out to me. I promise. Like, I promise this. Do whatever you could, okay? So... <laughs> You'll be on. I, I believe them. they will. They will. Yeah, they will. I promise. <laughs> it takes time. So, like, the final question for the interview is, uh, what is some advice for people who would like to be like you one day? Oh, wow. So, I would say never, never, never let anyone tell you no. Anything is possible in this world. Anything, if you set your mind to it. And just remember that you do not have to compare yourself to others. Every single person who has made it, every single person who is where they are now has had a different set of circumstances, had a different path in life, made different choices, had, there has different personalities, different ways they think. So there's no way you can expect to do the exact same thing another person did and expect the exact same outcome because we're all like actual snowflakes. No, none of us are the same, none of us. Even if you have an identical twin, you're still your own person. You're still different, you know? So I just say, don't compare. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Um, you know, choose your words carefully. Uh, don't complain. Don't uh, kind of uh, make your mind a fertile ground for negativity. And most importantly is just do your best every day. And then you live with no regrets. You tried your best and be present and just live and enjoy life. Yeah, I love that. Like, I, that's like the best piece of advice that I would definitely say. And like, I was like, like no one is perfect. Like, no one should be like, should be like other people. Even though you, people always say, "Be like this," like look like this, like look look like this person. I'm like, like, like you can look whatever you want. You put it your own way. And I have a twin myself. I have a twin brother. Oh, you have a twin brother. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, and he's a minute older than me sometimes. He's a minute older. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, and like, I always, people always like love Ch- my brother. His name is Chase. And people mm-hmm. always love my brother. They, I didn't like, and like, I get a lot of people use me for my brother because like, they p- think he's H-O-T. I don't want to kind of say that word like um, on a thing, but you think he like they use me for him all those things I'm thinking to myself like I get that from a lot of people people tell me I'm thinking to myself like look what you're missing on like why are you missing miss, like using me for my brother like, do you like, do you want to get to know me what I have to say like do you want to know me so I'm using me for my brother yes you can be friends with me and my brother like right. like like I'm thinking to myself like like bro like, do you know who I am like do you know you get I can actually help you on things like I'm always make time for people that's like that's what I don't I care about all my friends I, I care about like every everyone I talk to even if it's like no one that I met before like I met you and stuff and like I care about everyone that I talk to even though if I don't know them in person or I never met them before and I care about them so much and like everyone 
even if it's just like family, friends, and like people I never met, I always care about and focus on the person. Like I never try to make people out. Like if you all want to be friends with me, fine. That's fine. Like that's your like that's what you want. That's what you want. But like that's okay. Like that's your personal opinion. That's what you want. All right, that's fine. So you can't control other people sometimes. I learned this as well because sometimes I didn't understand why people did what they did. I'm like, why yeah. do you act like that? Why why do you do this? And you know, at the end of the day, people are all existing in their own world, their own realities, and nothing really at the end of the day is personal. So whatever they make you feel, it's really just, it's kind of a their problem thing. So just focus on you and and remember, um, you you can't uh, you can bring a deer to water, but you can't make it drink type of thing, you know? So at the end of the day, people make their own choices and you just, you're like, hey, I'm here. I'm a good person. I can help. But, you know, don't, you don't have to force anyone to do anything because they're just lucky to have you in their lives. You're a wonderful girl. You're a wonderful oh, thank person. you. You are too. So I just want to thank you so, so much for coming on the podcast. You are truly the sweetest person ever. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Like, this is I had an absolute blast having you on and we'll definitely talk soon. Like when, like, where are you based out of? Like, are you based in California? Yes, I'm in Los Angeles right now. Oh, really? I actually go down Los Angeles often, actually. This time I come down, like, I haven't been there in, since January last year to do COVID, but next time I come down, I'll let you know we can do something. Of course, that's so cool. Where are you? Uh, what Are you in California? Or, uh, no, I'm in uh, Pennsylvania. I'm in like Scram Wilkesbury. I'm out like oh, I'm two that's hours from Philadelphia. That's so cool. I grew up in Cleveland, so we're kind of neighbors. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Next time you're in Cleveland, let me know. Are there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, next time you're in Cleveland, let me know. We can I can drive up there. We can meet meet somewhere halfway or something. I love that. I love that, Kylie. Yeah, so I just want to thank you so much for coming on. You're true to sweetest, and we'll definitely talk soon. Thank you so much. Yes, you're wonderful. Many blessings. Thank you so much, love. Bye.